five of my craft room makeover. Now today we're going to be fitting the vinyl flooring. So I've ordered this oak strip wood effect vinyl flooring and Matt's going to be helping me to fit that today. So the first thing to do is to empty out the room and then we're going to very carefully lift the carpet as we plan to then use that as a template to cut the vinyl which we're going to do out in the garden as the vinyl is 13 foot by 7 foot and the room is 9 by 6 so that will just make it easier to cut. Okay, let's get started. The room is now completely empty. We've just stacked a few books and things on the window ledge there as we're running out of room in the dining room to stack it all. And I just wanted to say as well that we've got the new radiator fitted now, which I'm really pleased with because it's one of the newer designs. It's got this sort of full top panel rather than that open top that some of the older radiators have. And that one must have been in there easily for 30 years. It was all rusted along the bottom. So I'm really pleased with that. And we really couldn't have chosen a hotter day to do this. <laughs> I think it's going to get up to about 33 degrees today. So we've got all of the windows open. The front and back door to try and get a bit of breeze through. And now it's time to lift this carpet. And I think the only bit that's going to be a problem is the bit that's fixed under the... Um, sort of rails for the sliding doors so I'm not sure how we're going to do that but I'm sure Matt will have something in mind okay so let's get this carpet up so what do you think we'll have to do along there then I think we're probably going to have to cut along this line here and move the carpet and then see if we can tuck the actual lino actually under the runner because yeah. I think this is actually fixed so if we remove that we're going to have to take the doors off Remove the screws, remove the glue, and we haven't got any more glue to put it back down, so it's going to be a pain. So I think we just cut along there, try and cut in as much as possible, probably at an angle. Do you think you could down. lift? Yeah, we should be able to lift it up a little bit yeah. so we can slide the actual liner under. The liner is going to be thinner than the carpet. It should slide under there quite nicely. So what I was worried about was all the uh, remnants of the old carpet which they've left behind. So we're going to have to probably scrape this up. It's only it looks like it's only foam, a lot of it probably vacuum off. I'll we'll probably have to do a little bit of filler work. And the bottom of this rad as well, I think. It's coming up quite easy actually, shouldn't be a problem at all, probably up in seconds. I'll go and get a knife and then we'll slice along the bottom of there. This foam that Matt was talking about being stuck to the floor, I think that's going to come up quite easy. I can even just sort of push it off with my foot there. I think he's, he's just gone down to his workshop actually to get the knife and to get a scraper, like a wallpaper scraper, so I think we'll be able to get that off. That'll be quite fun. Well, I said to you, it's, these, it's just these old concrete slabs under here. Oh, nice and cold. Okay, so I'm just using a standard Black & Decker box cutter or um, retractable knife. Okay. I'm just going to go along the corner. I want to get into that corner there, so I want to actually try and fit that in the lino as well, so it all goes in. If I go at an angle, in like that. Mm. Is it cutting? Matt's now cut all the way along the edge of that runner and it actually came out quite easily didn't it so we've got a nice space to tuck the vinyl under. Yeah we'll just add another say another 10 mil onto the end of this it just tucks underneath there nicely well probably not 10 actually probably about 5 mil yeah 
So we go to that edge there, it's going to be too short. Okay. And another 5mm and I can just tuck it underneath. I can always trim the last bits off. When it's in. Then. And then along here, this um, carpet runner thing here has got these spikes on that the carpet sort of grips to. So we're going to have to knock those down, otherwise they'll just tear through the vinyl. And then we can probably press this down as well, can't we? And then yeah, tuck I might the vinyl even, underneath. I might even put some more screws in there just to hold that down a bit. Yeah. Put a screw in there just to hold it flat. It's lifting up. Mm. So just put one in that corner, probably one in that corner. Okay. Drill a hole and put some screws in it. Shall we get it up then? Yeah. Looking forward to this bit. <laughs> close the door then. So the carpet's now up and the floor isn't actually as bad as we thought it would be. There's a little bit of filling to be done. But yeah, not too bad at all. I think we've got most of it up now. We're just going to have a quick sweep and see what's left. And then we can get the old Henry out. onto the vinyl in the direction that it will go. So there's the, the window recess over there and the door here where you come in. And I think I spoke to you in one of the other episodes about how I wanted the lines of the strip wood flooring to go along the length of the room and that's why I had to order this extra bit of lino because this longest edge is actually the width that it's sold in. I keep saying lino, it's not lino, it's vinyl. Same <laughs> thing. So 13.1 feet I think is the width of the vinyl and then you'll always find that the length that you order is in the direction of the um, wooden flooring you know, slats. So that's why I had to order that extra bit. But we've actually got um, a little boot room at the back as we go in the back door and that extra bit will fit in there so it doesn't go to waste. But that's just always worth thinking about when you're using a vinyl with a, a stripe on it like this, which way round you want the, the stripes to go. And if you're not sure which way they go, 
um, as you're ordering it, then just drop the company an email and ask them which way around the stripes go. Okay, we better get cutting. <laughs> Okay, so we've got it laid roughly into place and we've taken off the mirrored door there as that's the one that sort of hangs further forward and we couldn't get it underneath there. So that's just standing out in the dining room for now. And that's just going around sort of tucking it in, making sure it's all along the edges correctly. And we actually left about 10 millimetres or a centimetre extra. Did you do that around all edges? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll have a little bit of trimming to do, but it's always better to have to trim some off than for it to be sort of cut short. But even just looking at it here, I'm really pleased with how that looks. It looks so much cleaner. Makes it feel bigger in here and much more airy. See that comes under there, nice. It fits nicely. Gap. I'm trying to lift that gap. Yeah. Ooh. The door might need a bit of, <laughs> bit of work. <laughs> so, Matt did actually hammer down those um, little spikes in the carpet. What are they called? Carpet tidy? Grippers edge. Gri yeah, gripper things. Edge gripper. Thanks. <laughs> I'm just saying lots of different words. <laughs> yeah, still got a bit more. Yeah, because I think we need to go. Is it easier if I get out? <laughs> no, it's alright. It's going down quite nice. It'll settle anyway. Yeah. Plus, once we trim all the edges, it'll just lay flat. Yeah, it's nice, okay. isn't it? Yeah, it really does. Makes a little bit of difference. I like the colour as well. Yeah. Okay, let's um let's trim and then I'll come back to you. <laughs> so the vinyl flooring is down and trimmed, and Matt's done a great job of trimming around the edges and tucking it in under the skirting board and along that rail as well. And it looks really good. Looks better than I could have imagined actually. Makes the room look bigger, feel bigger and so much cleaner as well. It's going to be so much easier to keep clean. I haven't got to get the vacuum cleaner out. I can just sweep around with the broom and any spills can be easily wiped up. So now it's just a question of getting the um, furniture back in. So everything is now back in place and I'm really pleased with how that looks. So it's now almost two o'clock so that's taken us about four hours. Now it's Friday today I'm not going to end the video here because I'm expecting the worktop to be delivered on Monday. So I want to film us putting that into place as well. And that's also going to make a really big difference in here. And then we'll almost be done. There are a few other little bits that I want to buy. But so far, so good. I'm really pleased with how that looks. So the last thing I now want to do is put the rug back into place. I think that looks really nice. I think that colour goes really nicely with the colour of the flooring. 
So that was a good morning's work. And now I'm going to go and have some lunch and a really cold drink. It is so warm here today and stuffy, even with every door and every window open. And I'll see you again on Monday. So it's now been 10 days since we fitted the final floor in and still no worktop. Now I ordered the worktop on the 29th of May from a company called Savoy Timber but I ordered through eBay and they gave me an expected delivery date of the 1st of July. So on the 2nd of July I contacted them through eBay to say where was it and I didn't get a response. I contacted them through Facebook a couple of days later, still no response, so I had to open up an eBay case. Lo and behold, later that day, I received a response just saying, um, this should have been with you by now, have you not received it? So I went back to them and said, no, still not received. They then responded to say, I'll look into it, I'll get back to you in the morning. So this morning came and went, I messaged them again, this afternoon and said any news and they said they're still looking into it so it doesn't look good um, I'm not worried about losing the payment because I've reported it to eBay and I paid through PayPal so I can always claim that money back but I just really want the worktop it was really good value and they also cut it to length I was hoping that by now I would be able to show you the new worktop in place but that obviously that hasn't happened but one thing I do want to do today is to line the drawers of my tool unit down here using some of the excess vinyl so let's do that now So this is the leftover vinyl, got a small piece there and then this long strip, so I've easily got enough for these three drawers. I just want to start by taking out the bottom drawer and just empty that out. And then I just want to measure that drawer. So 3.50, we call it 3.45 by 3.05. say 305 by 345 didn't I? It doesn't have to fit exactly. Okay if there's a little bit of a border around the edges. And it just stops the tools from rattling around when you're sort of putting them back in the drawer. I'll just grab my steel rule. It's good when you've got everything to hand. So that's 305. <laughs> just, that just fits. <laughs> What I can now do is cut this piece out and then use this as a template to cut two more pieces from that longer piece. Cuts quite easily with scissors. It's a nice piece of vinyl, probably a couple of millimetres thick. It's got a nice um, sort of foam backing which makes it nice and spongy underfoot. I'm really pleased with it since I've sort of 10 days ago when we did it. It just feels 
so much nicer in here, so much cleaner. I don't have to get the vacuum cleaner out, I can just have a sweep around. Right, so let's try that in there. Perfect. So I'll just cut two more pieces and then I can put the tools back in. anything else in here since we fitted the vinyl floor in. I've just sort of been working in here really. There are still a few things I need to buy. I certainly need to buy a little waste bin. I actually keep borrowing one out of the bathroom so I really do need to buy a little bin for in here. I still want to sort out the stock wood that I've got on those shelves in there because it just means taking this out and taking out the tubes whenever I want to get to that which isn't too much of a problem in the scheme of things but it would just be nice if it was easier to get to I can use that for. I might keep hold of it. I can find a cupboard somewhere to put that in, but I'll just put that over there for now and pop all the tools back in. I'll try and remember where I had everything, so I was just sort of getting used to that. And it's actually so much easier having um, this little unit beside my chair than having to keep going into that toolbox. easy to pull open the drawer and grab what I need. And everything's a little bit more visible as well. Actually not sort of underneath but I can move that around at a later stage. I'm going to chuck the gel sachets back in, that just keeps everything nice and dry. Little wax um, tea lights here for when your saw starts to get stuck along the edge of the mitre box. Just rub that along the edge of the saw and that helps it glide more smoothly. Okay, pop that one back in. sorted out anything for my paintbrushes yet either. So that's another thing I need to do. It's a little bit messy and all just sort of laid in here. My wire brushes just went at the back of my hair. Of that. 
got a spare um, Swan Morton handle in there. This is an old one. But sometimes this bit can weaken. And I'm talking after quite a number of years of using it. I think I'd had my first one probably for a good 10 years. And then this bit sort of just snapped. So I always like to have a spare one handy in case that happens. Yeah, I definitely need to sort this area out. That's a bit too messy. It's a shame just having that all chucked in there when everywhere else is so organised now. So I'll make that a priority, trying to find some sort of little storage um, dividers or something to go in there. I had thought about the idea of having some pots on my desk, but I really like the sort of streamlined look of the desk without too much on it, so I'd rather have them sort of tucked away in a drawer. OK, let's put that one back as well. That's another little job done. Now I had a question in the comments below on the last makeover video and that was where do I keep my doll's house and all my other bits and pieces. So let me show you. So my doll's house lives out here in the corner of the dining room. Sits on this three drawer, three door pine cupboard. And just to give you a bit of perspective, there's the door to my craft room. So it's right outside my craft room, so nice and handy. And I'm not going to show you the rest of the dining room because we've actually just started decorating. So we've got a lot of stuff piled over in the corner, which doesn't look very nice. But I will just show you inside this cupboard where I keep a lot of my other craft supplies. So in this first drawer here, just a few bits, I've got my little bags of sand and coloured sand at the back there. I'm not sure um, where I got those from actually, but I was thinking of using them for some little um, bathroom accessories, doing some little bath salts and things. This sand I actually ordered when I did my beach themed living room and I used a tiny tiny amount so I've got a lot of that left but I've got a couple of projects in mind for that. Sponge here that I use to stand things in whilst they're drying. Little flower kit, other bits of sponge, tape, a little bit of toolbox liner left over there. And then in here I've got things like plastic magic, glue, I've got my dyes here which can be used for dyeing scenic water, very useful when you're making things like pickled onion jars and things, scenic water, so just all things like that in there, sort of chemically bits, horrible epoxy resin, scenic rust, little scenic rust kit in there. And then in this middle one I've got paints, oil paints, watercolour paints, coloured pencils and things like that, another little cutting mat, tiles, paint palette, crayons and charcoals and I keep my waxes in here as well. And then this is a little sort of odds and ends drawer, it's got my polystyrene balls, some scenic materials, brushes, sponges, quilling papers, um, some flower wires there, a little box of wooden shapes and my um, power cable there in the corner. And then in this first cupboard I've got all of my paints, all of my little humble enamels in there as well, some pots either for mixing wood dyes in or standing things in. Wood dyes and varnishes, thinners, white spirit, polyfiller. I always like to keep a few of these little plastic pots for different things. And then in this end cupboard I've got all my polymer clay materials. That's actually for my keyboard. <laughs> polymer clay tools and things in there all of my seeds and mixing bits. 
little door lives in there as well. Got my Dremel tool here, which I'm determined to learn how to use properly. Plaster scene and flower making bits in there, just lots of odd bits really, which I've sort of tried to keep as neatly as I can in here. This here are sort of doors I've got for other projects. That's for the um, doll's house shop, which I'll be doing for Patreon shortly. And then all of my miniatures and things which are kept in these plastic trays which have got the dividers inside. And I've shown you those in another episode so I won't get all of those out now. And then um, trimmings and ribbons and all things like that. So just really an assortment of bits in this bottom cupboard. And it's really handy um, having this cupboard to stand the doll's house on and act as an extra um, storage space. And in the next episode um, of My Doll's House Diary, which I'll actually start filming, if not later this week, then early next, I'm moving up here um, to this top right-hand bedroom. I don't think that bed will go in there. I think I'm going to use that in the other bedroom and build a bed to go in here, but I'm really looking forward to starting the bedroom. I've got some lovely teal green fabrics on the way and I found a lovely wallpaper which I'll show you all in the next Doll's House Diary episode. also want to make a start on the little desk for the study. I really love how it looks in there. I still can't wait to dress that um, cabinet at the back. Really looking forward to making lots of bits and pieces to go on there. And I also want to make some lanterns to go in here in the fireplace. I thought we'd have three different sized lanterns with candles in. I've seen those in an image I found online. I thought they looked really nice. So we'll do that as well in another episode. So I'm going off track here because this is the makeover video, but I'm starting to talk about the doll's house. So not quite the episode I had planned for you, but I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. Hopefully in the next episode we will be fitting the worktop, so I'll keep you updated on the progress of that. Now do look out for that episode 25 of My Doll's House Diary, where we'll be making a start in the bedroom, and that will be coming soon. And for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!